I have some concern, uh, and as the Orthodox know, um, if you are a convert, that your parish priest will tell you to stay the hell away from these monastic writings. Uh, that, uh, you know, d you know uh, things like by the Hermonk Damascene or uh, Seraphim Rose, uh, Philokalia, they say, don't touch this stuff. Uh, it's for the advanced. Um, and sometimes not even then, it's for the monks or even a priest. Uh, again, we're told in scripture, don't, uh, don't eat this, don't eat the food that's uh, not don't eat the food, but, you know, uh, for the new in Christ, it's, you know, um, like, you know, an infant, you'd give milk, and then for the more advanced, you'd give, like, the meat and stuff like that. This isn't things of, like, spiritual awareness or anything. These are disciplines that gradually come, but you need to know things like the Nicene Creed before this stuff, for these kind of heavy things, um, and they have their place. Now some, uh, so I want to go over this. Um, I sent this to somebody and it doesn't reveal who they are. Um, but I think these words are fitting for people and maybe there'll be a little bit of outing myself here, but I, I don't mind. Um, I am chief among sinners. And when I say that, before taking the Eucharist, I mean it. Um, I said, Happy Easter. I said, Don't let the monastic nonsense get to you. This, uh, the message that you believed a year ago about salvation, grace, and preaching to the lost is totally orthodox. <coughs> Our works are a response. And we fail in our works every day. Or I do. I should have put that as I do. Um, it takes an arrogant, self-righteous monk to believe he can work his way to the kingdom. And I said, I openly oppose Monathos. I continually back, backslide and break my fast if I ever try at all. That's true. Um, it is only love for the gospel that makes us Christian, not obedience. Or, or I said, not, not, it is obedience. Our obedience is in love, not works. To you Protestants, and I, I think other people struggle with this as well, maybe not even coming from Protestantism when they, when they read these things. And I, I've been talking to somebody, and I, I need to talk to him. It's, it's been long overdue. Um, I need to congratulate him on his becoming a catechumen. Uh, as I've said many times before, and I've been saying this for years on here, uh, when somebody, when I hear a, a Protestant say, I am saved by the grace of God through faith and there's nothing I can do. Christ did so much that uh, I am not going to attribute anything of my salvation to myself. That I can do nothing for it. And they naturally out of love and joy follow um, or try to follow the law. And um, even then, uh, I don't mean following certain works or things like this. I mean lovingly with a heart full of love and, and, and uh, just, well, with a heart full of love, pray to God, you know, when they do and... Um, are happy in Christ and, and, and love Christ, I find this is a very mystical, awesome form of orthodoxy. This is, to me, something magnificent. Uh, I, I don't feel that people have to lose that when coming to orthodoxy. The orthodoxy just gives you a lot more tools. It's not saying you have to work your way into heaven. It, that's bullshit. That's from the Mormons. When the demons whisper that in your ear, you're not worthy enough, just say yes exactly that's true i am not worthy and i rely on christ what is the central prayer for any time when we get into trouble or when we're in meditation or 
when um, we simply want to pray more. What do we say? Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. And the shortest form of that that encapsulates says, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And with that, boom. I, there is even parts of the text of the Bible that talk about God forgetting your sin. He doesn't want to know about it. Um, I can remember one time, and I didn't know that this was orthodox or that it was a Christian thing to do. It was probably coming out of a more uh, kind of gang mentality or something like that. Or not gang mentality, but just kind of... Uh, you know, my loyalty to friends and stuff like that when um, my godfather got in an argument inside the uh, the nave, in, you know, in, inside the proper church proper, I mean, not on the altar, but uh, he'd gotten a ye yelling match with somebody. And the guy was, you know, he's, he was a jerk or whatever, but. He, he really picked it and was provoking it and stuff like that. Not that what my godfather did, you know, was, you know, 100% awesome, you know. No, he shouldn't be yelling inside of a church um, into the sacred space of God. But he goes, you know, uh, there was a, and, and I was outside talking to somebody and I could hear this, you know, through through the through the narthex even. And I was outside. And uh, luckily the, the girl that was had come to the parish for the first time she wound up being baptized you know uh, but she didn't hear that I was like whoa uh, when he called me up on my drive home I was driving home and he said look I want to explain myself and you know it's just that this try he tried to I said no 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 I'm on your side I don't care what happened it, I'm on your side you're right he's wrong you know, which I already figured, and I, I kind of knew a little bit about it, but I, I wasn't going to have him apologize, and I didn't want to hear what he did wrong. I'm on his side. He's my godfather. I know him. I'm on his side. Whether whether he's right or wrong, I'm on his side. I says, you're right, and even if you're not right, it doesn't matter. I'm on your side. You don't need to explain to me. Uh... And as is a while later, I was going through and reading a lot of things, and that kind of seems how God take God stands towards the church. You know, you can get neurotic about. I mean, this is this is the the, the pitfall that a lot of you know. I don't know. You know, I still want to have sex with somebody. This and that. How many Orthodox go out and fornicate? But what do they do? They come back to the church and they they go to confession, knowing full well they're going to fornicate again. Why is that wrong? No, you go to confession because it's it's this is a growth process. You don't go there once. We're not Donatists, and yeah, we know our frailty. Be honest with with the God that loves you and that you, that you know and that you have a relationship with His Church. And through this process, it'll you begin to build this relationship, this bond, like sewing a parachute, just like how prayer is like sewing a parachute. And you at least you have some type of accountability. You're not lying to the church. You're not hiding anything back. Because remember, when you're confessing, when you're in confession, the priest is a stand-in for the church. We're in front of the icon of Christ. We're confessing our sins to Christ, but the the priest is a stand-in for the church. And Christ had given the church the ability to loose and bind. And when he says, you know. All that which you have you have said and what what are you um, what you have failed to say whether through uh, forgetfulness or um, I forget what it was forgetfulness or something else he says or whatever it may be if you're too ashamed um, go free in the knowledge of you know it's basically you're you're done no no more care for with with no more care for your sin um i mean do you want to know how bad i am at fasting it's not even necessarily being bad it's straight up laziness nine times out of ten 
Same thing with my three daily prayers. Do I always forget to do them or do I intentionally not do them? Well, it's a little from column A, a little from column B. Oh, but do I rip the icons down? Why do I pray in the first place? Because I love to pray. Why do we take part in the fast? Because we're fasting alone because we're sinful and this and that? No, 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 no. It's because we're with the church and this is a time in the church that we experience this. Right? You know, it's it's better to be more forgiving and loving and have a, have a heart that loves Christ in the gospel than to, uh, than to watch us follow these things, you know? And you know what? Hell of a lot more work for the monastics. And yeah, they should be working out their thing. Because what are they? They're not even amongst the world. Right? I mean, what, what sick, twisted, wicked heart if somebody has to run away totally from the world just to be able to pray to God. I don't view them as the holiest people because of their things. I view them as the holiest people because they made that choice. Because they knew that they were so depraved and perverted that they couldn't exist among the world. And that's, you know, and after years and years of this, then they, they may achieve this holiness. There's some people who are just... nasty old men just pissed off old guys who've never had sex uh, that's that that's a plain rotten truth of it there are many monastics there are many monks that are very beautiful people and shine with some luminous with the love of god and don't see it as any trial for, to be away from the world love to pray love being in this mode of prayer all the time which they could not achieve in the world and they're praying for us continually so if you're screwing up and you're backsliding right even if you're but does that does that matter or is it walking towards the church no you're going towards the church right you're what you're not walking towards you're walking towards christ and you're you're um trying to as best as you can to your ability right then and there whether you're an inquirer or a catechumen or you're baptized or you you're a subdeacon or a deacon or a priest that you're on that path uh so when the devil whispers these things in your ear tries to get you all neurotic tell him to go to hell and uh i'll talk in the next video this will just be part one about being a knight and not not worrying about oh you know i had sex with that girl last night you know i'm probably gonna have sex with her for the next few months and this and that what you're gonna toss away orthodoxy something that you love you're gonna toss away christ and the gospel and these, these things that you love just because you're you know you have a penis and you're you know between the ages of 16 and 25 Hey, what's it better to be somebody who falls into fornication and says, look, I like this and I don't want to stop, but the church says it's not the way to go. I'm going to go and confess my sins and, you know, maybe through this long process of confession, going to confession every week or every two weeks or every month, we'll see how this plays out. And trust me, it will help you and it, and it will play out to your advantage. And even if you want to stop, fine. Uh... There is no white knuckling in orthodoxy. We're a family. Those of you in orthodoxy, those of you who become catechumens, those of you who were baptized, you're one of us. And those of you who have who have had great at great cost have been coming towards the church, I consider you one of us. So you know when you're standing on judgment day when you're part of the church what is god going to say well your sins here no christ is going to say oh, i don't know that's my guy i'm representing him like a lawyer i'm representing him with his blood that covers him okay now are you going to get the myriad of crowns and all this kind of stuff well uh, the kingdom of god is unfolding continually um i mean are you going to be with in paradise and perfect with god and say well that guy guess five crowns i only have two 